It was a very normal day in this grassland, and this person named Brick underscore man, decided to steal the entire Payday 2 game and pasted it into Roblox. It is very clear that the video ends here. Please subscribe and help me reach 4 subscribers by next month so I can be given free time outside of the basement. I It is November 21, 2009, and Brickman joins Roblox, at first nicknamed Brickman 2010. He gained interest in making Roblox games early, and his first game would be named, Brickman's Ride, which would later be renamed to Pirates of the Caribbean. Then he made some other games, such as, Roblox Spiking, Shooting Range, Viking Defense, and Halo Reach. And some of these games became popular at the time and got into the front page. One of the other games that he made was named Space Mountain, and he created the place for it in January 29, and this specific place would be very important later on. There is literally no information about what this Space Mountain game was about, the few information that I could find was that this game had two badges before, one named Memorial Badge, and the other named I forget. However, Brickman would then start playing Payday 2, and he would get an amazing idea. It is unclear when did Evan start development of the game, but in June 29, 2014, he would announce his new game, coincidentally also named, Payday 2. And the map that most likely started it all, was none other, than R&B Bank, and it was at first just named, Bank. In the first month of the game, there were no lobbies, instead, when you entered the game, you had to vote in which map to play. Along with the other three players in the server, and when you either won or lost, you had to vote for the next map. There also were cards you could choose at the end of a heist, which gave you rewards. The map itself was simple not very different from the future one, you had to drill a vault in which there was cash, and you had to secure by getting it to the van so you could escape, and there was extra loot, such as safes. The game in the first month received a bunch of updates, one of them being weapons, because apparently the game in the very first days did not have one of the most basic features of a heisting game. After over 20 weapons were added in the next three days, new maps were starting to be developed, because at the time there was only one, the new map would be named Warehouse, sadly I do not have any footage of this map. The next map would be named, Mall Crasher, which was about destroying them all for monetary gain. The next map made after Mall Crasher, would be Nightclub, in which the only footage I got is one piece of video. A new special unit would be added, the Riot Shield, the only special unit in the game before it was the Cloaker, however the other special units will take a long time to come. The first videos I could find about the game on YouTube were these two, published in the same day. July 21st, I am not quite sure which one was first, but they likely weren't the first as other videos could have been privated or deleted.
This guy apparently made a mask in the game, which was this one, the most expensive one in the game. In the same day, the Diamond Storm map would be added, as well as a vote kick system. Later on, difficulties will be added, ranging from normal to overkill. Then, police would be given a brain, so they can now take cover, and one month after the game released, a lobby system would be finally added, so you can make your own lobbies. However, for the rest of the year, Brickman would no longer talk in his update log. Al thought there still were updates, most notably, the weapon system would be changed. I present to you. The game went from having 3D models and around 20 weapons, to just having 3 weapons, all of which were images attached onto your screen. As if it wasn't obvious, these images were taken from Payday 2, and it would lead to a problem in the future. The rest of this era is unknown, because Brickman stopped logging updates for a long time, and I could not find many videos, however, they did make a new map, named, Watch Dogs. In the 3rd of March, 2015, Brickman would start updating Brickman Nation again, with notoriety updates, and the first update he would announce, was police being made smarter, however, the most important update was the weapon system being replaced. Now there was actual 3D models, however, that still wouldn't save the game from future consequences. There will be no new update logs for 4 months, until July, when several updates were added that month, such as, 4 stores, a new difficulty named Death Wish, a new special unit, and a bunch of bug fixes. During this time, Overkill found out about the game, and they were not happy, so they requested Brickman a bunch of things in order for the game to not be taken down, one of them being changing the name. So he did, heist.
After the game got renamed, updates resumed, stealth updates, now NPCs can see other bodies, broken cameras, and hostages, voices were also added, they were voice lines you could choose from. Oh no, everything's okay, uh, no need to call the cops or anything. Trip mines got added as an equipment, they exploded when an officer walked past them, and to open safes with them you had to shoot it, a bunch of skills were added, and there is now a new mission, Trustee Bank, which also was very original. Hello everyone, it's Opam here from the Noob Gang. Today, we are playing Heist. I'm joined here as usual by Abs Roblox. Hidden jammers were added, they could block all communications while they were active. And it was soon used as best equipment for stealth. A new special unit was added, the taser operator, and they could freeze you in place. Deposit boxes were changed, they used to give you guaranteed cash every time you opened them, and it was not a lot, now there can be gold bars, or loose loot in them. Along with it, there was a new weapon, the saw, and it could open deposit boxes in an instant, there is now a running animation, so your arms no longer look static. Another new heist, this time it's a special one, because it's now actually original, terminal, in this mission, you had to rescue a bag of cash in what is an airport, and once you did, the escape helicopter would arrive in some minutes. In the map. There also was boxes you could search for more money, from them you could get a bag, named Valuable Package, which was worth more than a money bag, after the helicopter arrived, you had to secure the bag of money, and you now could escape. The map was made by someone named 14 Grains, he had made a game where the map was featured in it, he also got a weapon in the game named after him, the 14 Grains Reinfield, which also was probably the rarest weapon in the whole game.
During this stage of the game, the game received a lot of updates, most of the time daily ones, and Shadow Raid was added as a mission. Let's do this. Time for a payday, fellas. Guard there. This heist could have a lot of bags, and a lot of money, Al thought you could take a long time full sweeping it. Important stealth updates were released, such as a detection meter, making you able to see how much someone is detecting you, a pager limit, you now can no longer kill everyone in the map, and a detection level which makes you get detected either slower or faster, depending in your loadout, such as weapons, or armor. An hostage trade system was added, if your teammate gets to jail, you can get them back to the fight by trading one hostage. New skills were added, one of them let you hostage police, and the other let you convert them to your side, and a new light machine gun was added, the Brenner 21. A new mission was added, cook off, in this one you had to cook Bloxy Cola, with the ingredients you found around the house, if you were out of ingredients you could signal a flare, and an helicopter will arrive with more, however you couldn't cook meth. At one point, Brickman was planning to add EI teammates, but it didn't happen because the enemies were already bad themselves. Brickman posted a teaser for the next mission, and then two days later, the Golden Grin Casino released. In this mission, you had to search the archives, send it to the fax machine, get the key card from Brickman and get into his room, pour the sleeping gas in the vents. Search three documents scattered around the map, open the vault, get the cash and escape. In loud, you had to plant one C4 next to a table, then you had to wait for the giant drill to arrive, then you get some water from the sinks, fill the drill with water, wait for the drill, and then get the money and escape. It was the second heist you need a Game Pass to host, and the last one to ever do. Update number 5, would add more melee weapons, there was 3, the fist, the knife, and the money bundle which you unlocked by joining the Brickman Nation group. Other melees would be added soon, the taser melee can now be unlocked by getting a badge named like this, which you unlocked by opening the vault in Golden Mask Casino in stealth. Sprinting was nerfed, now you can no longer run forever, and have to wait for stamina to regenerate. In October 24th, the trick or treat mission was added, it would only last for a week, in this map, you had to run around a neighborhood and get candy from them, it was allowed only heist. 
you can unlock three things from this event, a zombie armor for getting 20 buckets, a crown of bones for getting 30 buckets, and a ghoul armor by getting 40. Now, for some reason, I could literally not find a single video about this mission, I've searched through entire channels, and there was nothing, almost like it didn't exist, so the only footage of this mission, is this image. Mobile was actually made playable, it did exist before but it was very buggy. The sentry gun was added in update 9, and you needed a skill to unlock it. Two days later, the wasted shotgun pack would be added, and it would include three shotguns, the M1014, the Raven, and the Street Sweeper, the last one being a secondary weapon. The weapons were made by someone named Wasted7652, which is why it's called like that. In update 10, you can now attach different attachments into your weapons, extended magazine, FMG rounds, which increase your damage, slug rounds, which let you completely ignore shields, and the flashlight. The intro got changed, from this, to this iconic one. R&B Bank and Nightclub got revamped, they went from this. To this. And in November 26th, Jewelry Store was added, and it was designed as a starter heist. Shoot it at one! Call, call the cop! Call, call, call the cop! Take hostage! Get the money! Get out of here! In Update 14, over 20 new skills were added, many of which are still here to this day. It's now holidays, the lobby was themed differently, and there were masks you could unlock. Also, the double cash game pass was added an hour later. Update 16 is released, and it's the infamy update, if you're level 100, and have 20 million cash, you can now reset your gear, skills and level for extra exp and infamous items. It had 9 infamy levels, which were shown in roman numerals. A day later, the in-game UI was changed to look better and simpler, going from this, to this, in update 17. There was now a 0.5% chance you could get an infamous card, and then get a rare item. Infamy upgrades would make this more likely to get. One of these items could be the 14 GER's Reinfield, the rarest weapon in the game. In the same day, there is now a new map for the holidays, Gift Factory.
In this one, you had to make presents with the multiple machines you had, and defend them from the police. You could get two badges from this map, one of them gave you a winter beanie mask if you collected 10 bags, and the other let you be able to play the mission after the event was over if you collected 20 bags, because the map was for limited time. A new badge for Big Bang, named Silent Master, Al thought Brickman had some trouble with the name, so he renamed it to Stealth Master, if you got the badge, you would unlock the AK-74 weapon as a reward. On update 18, the animation update finally happens, heavily improving the current system, going from this, to this. It's now 2016. The Christmas event ends, and the menu is reverted back to normal. Brickman and his group Wall would start announcing progress about the new map, this map was, Fave Breakout. And on January 31st, Fave Breakout would be released. Yes, the fave we all know about, long ago before any controversy, he used to be a cool guy. In this mission, it was split into two days, in the first one, you had to rescue fave from a prison, get him in the truck and escort the truck on the way to the parking lots, and there was four obstacles in the way. The first one was a police car you had to move, the second one was some road spikes you had to remove, the third one was a SWAT van you had to drill the door of so you could move it, the fourth one was a parking machine you had to use a ticket for. And the final one, was some road barriers you had it to lift down, by searching for the control room and hacking the computer in it, there was also a bulldozer in there. After the hack is finished, you signal the driver a final time, and then use the parking machine, which you get scammed 7 bucks out of, and after that, you get teleported to the second day. In the second day, you had to escort Fave to the terminals at the back of the map, then he had to hack through three terminals, in the first terminal you just had to defend the power boxes from being disabled, and if they did, you just rewire them. In the second terminal, you had to approve a request twice, and in the third terminal, you had to find a server in one of the four offices downstairs. And at the end of the third terminal, you had to verify a DNI sample with a machine inside a room, locked behind another door that has to be drilled. After that, the escape was in the basement, behind another door that also has to be drilled. And then, you escaped in the van.
For completing this mission in Death Wish, you got a badge, named Broken, which gave you a new weapon, the RPK. And a few days later, there is now a new enemy, the Captain, he can spawn randomly in the loud portion of a heist, along with the shields protecting him, and will lock the assault so it can never end, until his health reaches zero, where he retreats and the assault ends, he could spawn in four different maps, R&B Bank, Fave Breakout Day 2, Big Bank, and Trusty Bank. Bags were changed, so they no longer looked like made out of fabric. The menu was changed to look more professional, now in it you had your character shown in it holding the mask and weapon, and voice packs were renamed to character packs, because they now included different characters, and in update 22, a loadout system, so you can now have different weapons in them, and change them before the heist starts, without having to change your entire loadout, and each loadout costed 1 million to buy, also, unlike now, there was only one skill tree, that worked for everything, and when you hit level 100, you would get enough skill points to afford all the skills in the game. Brickman would start announcing that a new map was almost done, but it was delayed by some days because of essays and traffic jams, and 16 hours later, the new map would be, First World Bank. The mission itself was interesting, you could do it in stealth by taking the key card from the manager, getting into the supply room, but there was nothing useful in here for stealth, so why did you even need to get in here? Then, you had to rewire three power boxes, all of which are located in the second floor, after that you had to hack a computer downstairs, when the hack was finished, you could open the gates to the vault area. There were two guards in here, and one civilian, which had a keycard, and when you used it in the keycard reader, the vault would open and the cameras in the vault area would go off. In the vault there was cash, and a lot of deposit boxes, then you had to throw at least four bags of cash inside the vents to escape, and the escape point was in a dark room at the other side of the map. For loud, you had to enter the supply room grab the drill and the thermite, drill the gates, and wait for the drill, then pour out this pill, which is supposedly the thermite, then wait for the thermite. You can speed up the process by pouring out the second one, when the thermite finishes, you get the cash into the vents, and escape. However, this map had one secret, there was a hat in the map, if you interacted with it, another one would spawn, but you couldn't interact with it again, so if you were an overkill or death wish difficulty, and brought another three teammates, you could get every person to interact with every mask, there were four masks that could spawn, an apple, a skull, an outrageous builder's hat, and a police hat. One person got one hat, the order in which the hats spawn was random. But once you got all hats, you unlocked this, you could now drill the big metal door at the end of the vault room. The drill takes around 30 minutes, and it couldn't break. Once the drill is done, there was a message from Brickman inside the vault, along with 50 bags of gold, you could get all of them, and then escape with much more money, this takes at least one hour to do. You could get two badges from this, the first one being overdrill, the one I talked about earlier, you would get a drill melee from this. The second one was named Flawless, and the problem is, there was a reward which was supposedly coming soon, but six years later, we're still waiting, Evan. Oh and also, this heist was very original and not taken from any game. After First World Bank, Brickman 2010 was now named Brickman with an underscore. Half a month later, a bunch of updates were released for spring, the first one included two new weapons, the Commando 553 rifle, and the broomstick pistol. The rifle was made by this guy, and the pistol was made by the guy from earlier, Wasted 7652. The second update released a lot of masks, and mask materials, because back then you could modify your masks with colors and materials, which were textures. The third update added a new character, Eternal Rainbows, he was very known in the community at the time. The fourth update added custom suits for each character, and the fifth update added even more customization. 
for April Fools, there was a new difficulty, Extreme, which was just removed the next day, but it certainly wasn't removed forever. The lobby was changed again, going from this empty warehouse, to this cool looking thing, but it did not last for long. Also, it was made by someone named Dark Ninja, which would later be important in the story. Overkill would revisit the game again, and a lot of things were changed, the names of certain missions, the difficulty skulls were replaced, a lot of soundtracks were removed, most of them from Payday 2, and the name was changed, Notoriety. Apparently, the game was called Crime Spree, for one day, the next day it was renamed to Notoriety. And three days later, the new heist drops, Blood Money, this one, was located in an hospital, and in it, you had it to obtain three blood samples from someone with a rare disease, by first searching the files to identify the patient, then getting inside the patient's room, extracting a blood sample, using the centrifuge, calling the elevator when you have enough samples, the centrifuge could fail, so you would have to use it again in case it did, get enough samples, fight the police, get in the elevator once it reaches your floor, and while in the elevator get hit by a missile sent by the military in a desperate attempt to not let the disease escape the hospital and cause a global... The saddest day in human history, guards and civilians could no longer make out. On the 3rd June, the next mission arrived, Robang. The only difference from the current one is that there was only one key card slot, and the cameras couldn't be disabled with just a wire. A new enemy is here, the technician, and it used to look like this. Just a month after Robank released, Art Gallery is now into the game, it was an art museum at the night, and you had to steal specific paintings, the correct ones had a red sticker next to them, the heist is meant to be in stealth, in case it's loud, the museum got closed, and you had to wait for the bandit barriers to open, then you continued normally by taking the paintings and escaping. In the detail update, equipment went from looking like this, to this, and a new equipment, and at the end of August, the game went from Alpha, to Beta, by adding a new inventory, and weapon skins, and th where the game went silent, no updates, and there was nothing. Until January 2017, where Brickman announced his new game, Valor was a medieval game about horses, factions, and castles, I've never played it, but I guess it was a good game, and it also was made because of a school project. Brickman then returned to updating Notoriety, just with bug fixes, because there was something planned ahead, the Notoriety revamp, in his YouTube account, he would upload three videos about progress in the update.
A week later, he uploaded the second video, about progress on the revamp. The next month, he uploaded the third and final video about the upcoming revamp, it lasts for 6 minutes, so instead I'm only going to show the important parts. Cameras now can actually detect, there is now a better drill model, and police cars, a new aiming system, cops can melee, and the vault uses physics to open. One month later, he opened the test place publicly. Separate from the main notoriety game, it only started with one map, and no skills, but it introduced more maps and a new skill system as time went on. Time was running out, the main game was slowly breaking away, as Roblox was updating the way games were made, so Berkman had to release the update as soon as possible. Unfortunately for Brick, he literally lost all of the player data, he gave up in getting it back. In December 22, 2017, the game revamped, and went from this. To this.
After notoriety was updated, a lot of people were mad, as they lost all their levels and cash. Not only that, but the game missed a lot of heists, which were removed as they could not get updated in time. And also the weapon system ended up being worse than the old one, seriously, it looks ugly. On the other side, the game came with a new skill system, 6 total difficulties, Al thought half of them were useless, a new special enemy, you could now actually restart the heist without having to leave, infamy now had 25 levels. And stealth was really easy, look at how slow they detect, loud however was a different story. Remember Dark Ninja? He is now named Headless Canadian, and became the co-creator of the game, the second most important developer, he had made the revamped map for Big Bang, 4 stores, cook off, he also had previously made Rogue Bank, 3 days after the grand update, on the 25th, Gift Factory is added back into the game, and for some reason, and I know the map was rushed, but it was worse than the old version, this is probably the worst map design I've ever seen for a game. But ignoring the horrible map, all you had to do was collect snow, and use it in the machine, which made presents, police couldn't interfere with the machine, and that was everything about the map. It's 2018, and somewhere around January, Mall Raid got back into the game, it was remade by someone named Galax, which had previously made the old downtown bank map, now in this Mall Raid, you had to break a specific amount of glass. And when you broke enough glass, the helicopter to escape would arrive in some minutes, sadly unlike the past version, it was loud only, well, unintentionally. It did not take long for some people to find a way to stealth mall raid. During this time, Brickman no longer wanted to develop the game alone, so instead, he got other people in the team, Tailsy, he is an experienced builder, and will later be the main map designer, Sneaky. Sneaky Menace somehow got into the team with no previous knowledge, but as time went on he became more experienced. He's currently named Sneaksy, and is the community manager of the game. But before those two, there was a person who stood out, who tried to become a developer for the game. Sis Shadow got rejected by Evan, because at the time Brickman was focusing on the game alone. Little did he know what would that later create. Notoriety can now be played in your cell phone. Al thought it was received with mixed reviews. Diamond Store is brought back, made by Tailsy. At first it wasn't able to be done in stealth, in this mission you simply had to get the jewelry from the display cases, since the alarm went off you had to wait for the van to come back, after that you only had to secure the bags and go. Up to this point, the only way you could buy safes was with notoriety cards, and these safes gave you masks, because of some issues, notoriety cards were deleted, and now instead, you bought safes with money. After opening they gave you masks that were already customized, and gave you free contracts, which were heists you could make without any cost. Golden Mask Casino, remade by Headless Canadian. Like the old version, you had to search the archives, get a key card from Brickman, pour the sleeping gas into the vents, search for three documents around the map, open the vault, get the cash and escape. Later on, you could now actually stealth Diamond Store, by disabling the alarm cases with the keycard, which you got from the manager, and going out silent. Mm -hmm. 
next heist to get in the game up next, is Art Gallery, remade by Awesome Zero, later changed his name to Vintuka, unlike the old version, there were no deposit boxes, and you couldn't disable the lasers, in case the heist weren't loud, two bandit barriers would block the pathways, and they wouldn't open until the assault starts. You can now actually sell your weapons, and fully reset your infamy. You could get a badge by doing this, name doing it again. For version 1.8, a mission that is actually original just dropped, Authority. It's located in a town controlled by the military, and they are containing looting side crates, such as money, gold, weapons, and Bloxy Cola. These crates had a time bomb. If it reached zero, the loot exploded. You had to defuse the detonators of the crates, get the bags, and get them in the van. This heist could be done both ways. If you went loud, a wave different from the others would appear. Military assaults, which were promised over two years ago. Regular units were replaced by National Guard, which had a ton of health, even more than the dozers. Can you die? Since the current weapon system was terrible, a new one was being made, directed by Headless Canadian. For July 18th, Shadow Raid is added back into the game, made by Dextero206. He had previously made a lot of assets for notoriety. It was a silent heist. There was loot scattered around the map, which could also be found inside red containers, or crates, in the samurai armor inside the vault, locked behind two keycards. If the alarm went off, you had a two minutes to escape, or the heist fails. This mission also included a secret, related to crystals around the map. Next month, there was blood money, it could only be done in loud, but you could stealth the first part, by shooting all cameras in less than 10 seconds, then planting a teddy bear, which was actually a bomb. Then after you extracted blood from the patient, stealth would end. Unlike the old version, the centrifuge never fails. There are now double exp weekends. They were self-explanatory. In October, the lobby was themed differently, and two weeks later, the haunted forest heist appears. You had to kill ghosts for a brew, and after you killed enough you took the brew and escaped. At the time it was hard, because the ghosts were very tough, and the current weapons didn't do much damage. After the event, 
Haunted Forest stayed in the game, and in November 2nd, the new weapon system is released, known as version 2.0. Along with a new weapon game pass, named the Marksman Pack, which introduced four new snipers, and for some reason this sniper was automatic. Even though it was a lot better than the old version, it still missed a lot of things, where are the reload sounds? Why does this not fire where I'm aiming at? Where is my revolver? Where is this pistol shotgun? Ten days after, Jewelry Shop was added back into the game, made by someone named like this, who later switched his name to Sleebalili, so in the map, instead of needing to take bags to escape, it was now just a crown inside a safe, and the jewelry was optional. The next heist to be introduced, was Black Friday, it is a mall in the middle of nowhere, the only way to get inside is through the entrance, which will always set off the alarm, so you can't do stealth, you have to get a dangerous material from three different boxes around the map, and after you took them all you could escape. For December, Gift Factory received an amazing change, going from this, to this, the new design was made by TLC, and now, you had to defend the power boxes from being disabled, and you escaped in a train, after you got enough presents. The next map to come back would be, Nightclub, it was a simple heist you could do quickly, the van was at the front, and you needed 3 bags to escape, any type of loot works, it was soon used as the best way to level up. The money you got from bags was severely nerfed, in Nightmare difficulty, you could get over 300,000 from a single bag of gold, and then it was halved, this includes every loot in the game. You now have a separate skill tree for each profile, instead of having a single one for everything, and a bunch of skills were replaced, the most important one being lock and load. It used to be make you able to shoot while running, then it was replaced with carrier pigeon, which could let you carry two bags at once. Before, you could have a detection risk of just one, now the minimum is three, infamy now actually reset your weapons and you could no longer reset your levels. So this badge became a thing of the past. 
In early March, there was a controversy in the notoriety development team, with headless Canadian, or Bryce as he was named inside the community. It revolved around him being generally lazy, a lot of his work being of questionable quality, like the weapon system, it missed sounds, the animations were mediocre, this recoil, aside from his work, he was also making the team mentally insane, like firing Dexter. And even though Dexter only made Shadow Raid, and the equipment for the game, he was working in a lot of things, that were never released, since he was tired of Bryce, and left the team to be never seen again. In the end, Bryce was fired by Brickman and Sneaksy, then he left the community himself. And over time a lot of his creations were starting to be replaced, he was making a fire starter mission, after he got fired it was scrapped, probably forever, along with a remake of First World Bank, and Fave Breakout, but he didn't make much progress, and instead other developers took his place. Talking about developers, I was wondering what happened to Killex, the guy who made Mall Raid, well, it didn't take me long to find out. But that's a story for another time. In April, the next mission remake released, Downtown Bank, similar to the old one, it was a simple bank heist, grab the drill from the parking lots, and drill the vault, inside there was gold and cash. If you wanted to do stealth easily then you had to go in a kill spree of civilians, and this mission also included a secret. After Downtown Bank, the game received a total of zero major updates, for almost a year, the game reached 100 million visits, and there was a live ops event in May, a Roblox sponsored event for the game, which got you an outlaw safe if you completed it, it was a very minor and irrelevant event, and live ops was received very negatively as a Roblox event, and thankfully it never came back. The game had its lowest player counts, sometimes even barely reaching a hundred, oh, and remember Sish Shadow, well, they made a game, that had a good stealth system, even loud could be considered better, and the game was constantly receiving updates, to the point that it became more popular than notoriety, even today. There would be no major news about the game, until late December, where a testing for the next major update was published, separate from the main game version 3.0. In 2020, in the 14th of February, version 3.0 released. This version added an extreme amount of changes, but the most relevant ones were, the main narrator became someone named, Jade. This update also included four different criminals, Onyx, the Mastermind, Harlem, the Enforcer, Ash, the Technician, and Shade, the Ghost. A repeat bonus and a repeat penalty system, the game went from using circles in detection and health, to using a bar, you can change your settings, and the game became extremely bright. The next major update, would be a returning map, transport, a two-day mission, in the first day you got ambushed while inside a truck, and moved the bags of cola into safety, then escaped in an helicopter, in day two, you had a second ambush attempt, and had to signal the boat driver, Manta, which was never seen before, then you had to secure Bloxy Cola, unfortunately the boat could only carry four bags at once, and after that it would have to come back. After you got enough bags, you escaped in a an helicopter, and the helicopter driver being this guy, Goose.
Not too long after, a new system of weapon skins was added, you could complete daily challenges, and weekly challenges, for weapon patterns, the challenges reset each day and week respectively. At first there was only one single daily and weekly challenge. One week later, you now got two weapon skins for each challenge instead of just one, monthly challenges, and armor skins were added as well. In October 31st, a mission that literally no one remembered five years ago just got a revamp, trick or treat, go around the neighborhood ringing doorbells, get candy from them, and stash it in a dumpster, or instead have a cloaker spawn, it added a new dose of variant. The mystical juggernaut, which only appears in this map, there was an event in which you could get an armor skin, an RPK pattern, and a new suit, the event would end in November 17th, but the map was still playable, and the adventure started every October. On December, a new map was teased, coming soon, but that soon would be a long time. In the next year, a public testing for the upcoming update was opened, the stealth update, it includes moving cameras, you can no longer sprint while in casing mode, guards detect even further and hostage guards now actually have pagers. In March 17th, update 3.4 released, named the stealth update, Al thought it was received with mixed opinions. The first part of the infamy update, released at the end of May, it increased penalties so much, you could even get negative 100 repeat penalty, making getting experience more time consuming, it added boosts, if you buy one you can get increased experience or cash, and you can get a permanent one for free by joining this group, it increases experience and cash by 15%, where's the second part you may ask? Well, I don't know more suits were added, you could unlock them with achievements, and were also made cooler looking, the suits were made by this guy and his store group. Months after, in October, the interaction update, it made interactions go from a line, to this circle on where the object is, that's all, you could now get the trick or treat badges again, and unlock a new mask in Haunted Forest. There wasn't a lot in the year, no new maps or interesting updates. However, after literally more than a year of waiting, in 2022, to celebrate the new year, the Ozella heist was now real, it was a concert in a giant stadium, the objective is to steal a golden guitar valued 6 million. After gaining literally nothing after opening the vault, it's discovered that the guitar is in the performer's hands, and you now have to interfere in middle of the show, after a blackout. You take the golden guitar, disguise as a guard, and escape. was well received, it was the first stealth only heist in years, ever since Shadow Raid, and to many it was the hardest mission in the game, since it had a lot of objectives, around the whole map. Two months later, monthly challenges were completely removed from the game, since they had to be manually reset, and they were giving the exact same rewards for months straight, 
and exchange. There were now three daily and weekly challenges at the same time, and bonus challenges could be added manually, like the one in April 1st, in which you had to rob this fungible house. The next update, mutators, you could make the game different, like making enemies deal more damage, civilians detecting quicker, or enemies exploding after dying. To get mutators you had to use the INA points, which you got from a new progression system, mutator experience. And it reached up to this point, there were two minor updates after that, both in July, one where highlighting was changed to look better, the other fixed a bug where cameras could not call anyone, at the current state of the game, you should instead go play Payday 2, it has more weapons, they are better, it has more missions, it has more... Currently, llegué mi Sabena Revamp. Llegó a un sistema de hechizos mediocre quality, and made by someone who is no longer the team, y sabe la convivir de Wolf from scratch. Multiple pico por hate to work with the game. Lumen, an animator, which has done way better than what we're going a year. And weapon models, made by someone named Nidrelli. You can see all of them here. There is still 3 missing maps from the old version. World Bank, it is confirmed to come back. The map, maybe of Ventoka, was probably finished and only this coding. Although that was over 2 years ago. Fave Breakout, except that Fave is no longer there. Instead, another character will be broken out, which we don't know about yet. The map, made by Telsey, has received multiple teasers and will come back. Although that was also announced a long time ago. And Terminal, it's an original mission, but it hasn't received any confirmation to come back. Guys, my boy Bryce are looking to be revamped. Currently, Four Stores is going to have a revamp and to be made an original guys. It will be renamed to Rush Out. And at the time of making the script, there has been three leaky images of the map. This shows absolutely destroy Four Stores. Another photo mission named Hoyos Fables is looking to replace your shop or diamond store. We'll see that later. But as the time of making chess, there are no public leaks of it. Other highs like Breakbank or Golden Mask Casino are most likely going to have the same fate. Kokov is probably being removed with Poker Sabotage One. Melray, originally made by Kalex, is going to have a revamp as well. Not only because the map is terrible, but also because some name just doesn't fit too well. The current focus is to make the game original, instead of just looking like a Lego Pay the Clone, and a current negotiation is being made by Overkill to return the game's old name, which used to be Heist. This game called Make a Comeback, it was one of the most popular games in 2015 and for a bit of 2016, and updates could make it popular once again. Or should play your original game. Yes. Thanks for watching.